lifting up Jesus and opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Okay, when we look at this psalm in the original Hebrew text, we see that people are mistranslating it or misapplying it out of all reasonable context to mean something that the original text does not at all mean. Again, we always point to Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8, the only passage of scripture that speaks to the issue of translation, which tells us the priority is on the original meaning of the original languages and the original autographs. In Psalm 1, the first Psalm, verse 2, but his delight is in the Torah of the Lord, that is the law of God, and in his law he meditates day and night. We have people today who either ignorantly or by deception, or more commonly a combination of the two perhaps, are saying this justifies contemplative prayer, this justifies Christian transcendental meditation, things of this nature. This is completely ridiculous. It is New Age and Hinduistic philosophy infiltrating the church. That is not what the original text means in the original language. That word there, he shall meditate. Yeah, 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 comes from the, the word hege, hege, which is the basic unit of speech or the basic sound. What the Hebrew is saying is, to vocalize the Torah to yourself. In other words, to repeat verses, to repeat text, to learn the word of God by memory, memorize it. Remember in the ancient world, they didn't have anything other than scrolls, megilot. They didn't even have codexes, books. They certainly didn't have <coughs> printed Bibles as we have them, or Tanakhs, or Mikraz. They, these are the Hebrew terms. Or they, they, they didn't have your Bible on a cell phone, or on an iPad or, or a laptop. They didn't have that. People had to memorize what they learned from the reading of the scrolls in the synagogues and later in the synagogues and originally in the temple. Or as when Joshua read the book of the law, the scroll of the law in, in Judges chapter, I'm sorry, in Joshua chapter 8, verse 20, or as was read by Moses on Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal, Harnabal and Har Gerizim in Samaria the mountain of blessings, the mountain of curses. You always see this emphasis in Old Testament history of reading the word of God out loud. Similarly, in the revivals of Ezra and Nehemiah, you see they read publicly from the book of the Torah, that is a scroll, the Torah scroll, they read it out loud publicly. People were to memorize these verses, memorize these passages, memorize the Torah, the Torah being the word of God. Now, Torah is an interesting term in itself in Hebrew. It means it's interpreted the way, but its actual root meaning is an instructor who shoots or shows somebody how to accurately shoot an arrow and hit a target. An instructor who accurately teaches someone how to shoot an arrow in order to hit the target. One of the Hebrew words for sin is missing the target. Chet, chet. You miss the target. All have sinned. All fall short of the glory of God. You miss the target. The Torah teaches us how to hit the target, how to keep from sin and to maintain God's law. At least it gives us the instruction. So you are to meditate upon this. Now this word, yehge, he shall meditate, is again from the word hege, a basic unit of speech. It means to soliloquies, sort of, or to vocalize. A hege, the root meaning, the, 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 the shortest or the root of the word, yehge, is a, a, a basic sound, a phonetic syllable. In other words, you're supposed to say it. You meditate upon it by vocalizing it, by repeating it. As if you were talking to yourself, you keep repeating the verses as if you were studying, trying to study for a Latin exam, or you were trying to study 
you know, I remember when I was a kid at university, I was trying to memorize the eight stages of, of Krebs citric acid cycle, oxalosicinic, malic, and I just would keep saying it and saying it, saying the eight stages of, of, of the citric acid cycle so I could work out adenine triphosphate reacted in Krebs cycle equals adenine diphosphate plus energy plus inorganic phosphate. And I just would have to memorize these formulas or memorize these biochemical stages and passages to understand the physiology. I would just keep repeating this stuff in my head, saying it until I drummed it in as a way of studying. Well, the ancient world, in the absence of books, it became really important to vocalize, keep saying the verses. Now, what does this mean, this meditating by repetition or repeating the Torah, repeating the word of God? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. The way we meditate upon the Word of God is to vocalize it to ourselves. This builds up our faith. Faith cometh by hearing. Now we'll get a bit technical. I went to my wife for some help. Although I speak Hebrew, and I know Hebrew, my wife, although a mathematician by profession, also has a degree in Hebrew linguistics, ancient Hebrew language and ancient Semitic languages. My wife explains things on a much deeper level than I'm capable of etymologically. The Hebrew language is constructed in such a manner as words are built around something called a root or a shoresh, sometimes two, but usually three letters. When two of the three letters in the shoresh or the root are in common with any two words, it means the two words have some kind of a connection between them. In the scripture, it's usually a theological connection. Hence, the term meditate, or he shall meditate, Yehgeh, has the Hebrew letters He, Gimel, and Yud. ha ge ha ge That's the root of meditate, of Yehgeh. In other words, to vocalize and repeat, ha ge Now, in the same verse, we find the Tetragrammaton. We translate it in English, the Lord, but in Hebrew it is Yahuwah, Yahweh. You've got a He, a Vav, and a Yud. Hawaya, Hawaya, Hagaya, Hawaya. There's an etymological connection in the Hebrew script between the word meditate and the word that is the name of the Lord. That is the Tetragrammaton, Yahweh. The two words are connected linguistically and etymologically in their structure. Well, why would the term for to meditate, to vocalize on the word of God, be theologically connected to God himself? Because of the logos. The word of God is Jesus in print. Jesus is the word of God incarnate. Scripture is Jesus in print. Jesus is the Word of God incarnate. Thus we see a link linguistically, etymologically, and theologically between the name of the Lord, the Tetragrammaton, Yahweh, Yehovah, and Yehagay. Now this term Yehagay has the Hebrew letter He. We have two H's in Hebrew, two H's. One is a raspy H, chet, chet. The other is a soft H, he, ha. It is a sound that is made sort of onomatopoeia by exhaling, ha, ha. And you've got this ha in the tetragrammaton, Yahweh, and you have it in ha, ha comes from breathing. It's the sound of breathing. The letter itself is on the PA. It comes from the sound of, of breathing. <sighs> now the word breath in Hebrew, ruach, is the same word for spirit. Greek, similarly. Breath, pneuma, like in pneumonia, spirit, pneuma. In both Hebrew and Greek, the word for breath and the word for spirit is the same. Hey is that letter. It's on the so in biblical Hebrew linguistics, hey 
indicates something spiritual. Hey indicates something of a spiritual nature because it is the sound of breath, opposed to the raspy H, the hey, 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 indicates something of a spiritual nature in ancient Hebrew thought. You find it in the Tetragrammaton, and you find it in Yehge. He shall meditate in the future tense. He shall meditate. That is the meaning. We should be vocalizing the word of God, making the sound, because faith cometh by hearing. Learn verses by memorization. But understand, as we are memorizing them, there is a spiritual dynamic involved in the process of memorization of God's word. Faith cometh by hearing. It builds up our faith. We should become walking Bibles, as it were. We should all be memorizing verses. Now, if you're like me, you can memorize the verses okay, but you sometimes have a hard time remembering where you put them. Is that chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians or is it chapter 5? Is it chapter 5, 3 or 3, 5? You know, I make mistakes like that, but I remember the verses themselves. Faith cometh by hearing. We vocalize the verses in order to memorize them, understanding that there's a spiritual dynamic to doing so. That the word of God is Jesus. Jesus is God. Him in print is the scripture that we are memorizing. Faith cometh by hearing. Keep repeating it and hearing it. So that by the power of the Spirit, you are hearing the voice of Jesus by meditating on his word. Yehagay. It has nothing, absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with visualization, with contemplative prayer, with Hinduistic philosophy or theosophy or a mantra. Nothing to do with a mantra. Nothing to do with contemplative prayer. Nothing to do with the Lectio Divina. Nothing to do with visualization. Nothing to do with any of these New Age techniques that are permeating the church and which, by which people are being seduced. Nothing. No, nothing to do with the way the scripture is mishandled by Bill Johnson's people or by Mike Bickle's people or the Kansas City False Prophets. That all comes from mysticism and Gnosticism. That is not the meaning of the original Hebrew text. I've given you the meaning. Faith cometh by hearing. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you so much and God bless.